Marcin Held, Satoshi Ishi, Marcin Tybura. Trenuj w sprzęcie dla najlepszych. Wejdź na groundgame.com. I don't want to take the attention away from the fight too much, but I want to ask you, uh, you know, what's going on in Texas right now? That's your home, obviously. I know when the floods were happening in Houston, you know, you were out helping people and doing things. Can you kind of give me, like, you know, your thoughts on everything that's happening in your home state right now? Um, I guess there's everything what you see on TV right now. Uh, everyone really stuck at home and depending on – the higher power, I guess the governor and uh, the mayors and everything trying to control or sort out the problems that they have because right now it really looks like it's more political than a real disaster, you know, so I really don't know. So my family is good right now, so I'm just going to keep it moving. Obviously, you were coming out to Vegas for the fight, so you kind of avoided all that, but but is everyone at home doing okay? I mean, any kind of distraction for you just because of – Kind of the craziness going on right now? I oh, know everyone at home is doing great. Um, it's really no distractions or nothing like that. Um, yeah, we're going to make it through. We've been on foot. Any city that's been through more disasters than the last five years is, is Houston. So I'm pretty sure we're going to make it through. I don't want to turn political, but I got to ask your opinion, Derek. I know you're an opinionated guy. What did you make of the story that uh, your your senator Ted Cruz was flying to Cancun uh, while everything was happening in Texas? Yeah, um, I actually took a selfie with him at the airport, and I told him, "Hey, let me come with you." He said, "Nah, nah, nah. They already giving me hell, so I'm gonna have to come back anyways. I'm gonna make it seem like." I'm um, just on the drop my daughter off out there, and I'm going to come right back the next day. So and I said, all right, that's cool. I'm, I said, my bad. I'm not going to even post the picture then. So I appreciate it. Black Beast handling business this weekend. That's all right, cool. <laughs> Got to make, make Jackson proud, right? Yeah, 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 for sure. Uh, last one for me. Obviously, this is a fight that got rescheduled, you know, because of what happened with the, the COVID testing and everything. I mean, it's kind of a crazy time right now. But uh, – was there any disappointment that you didn't get to fight one more time last year? I mean, is it just the nature of the sport right now where things happen like that? I'm sure there's no ill will towards uh, Curtis because he got sick. But, I mean, you know, is, was it disappointing you didn't get one more in last year and you had to wait basically another, you know, three or four months to fight? Oh, not at all because it's not – it's like it's – it seemed like the, all the guys in front of me already had fights anyway book and – the only fight would have made sense before he had got his, his last loss is Overeem, you know, besides him. Um, so I guess everything is still would have been – I was still probably would have been just sitting around waiting and see what happened in March. Thanks, Derek. Yeah, thank you. We'll take our next questions from Pablo Santa Maria with Noti MMA Ecuador. Your line is open. Ecuador. Hey. Can you hear me, Derek? Si. Hey. <laughs> okay. The first thing I want to ask you is, how do you feel when you find out the fight with Cortez was canceled? Um, like I wanted to know why, what happened, um, and if everything was going to be okay with him. You know, I was just, I was concerned. You know, I didn't want nothing really bad happen to him. You know, I don't like the guy, but you know, I wouldn't want him to to go to um, the ICU or nothing like that because of COVID. I just only want them to go there because of me. So I felt bad a little bit for him. Yeah. Okay, for sure. And when you find out he he had COVID and the fight will be rescheduled, do you took any security in your gym to prevent you to get COVID? Um, We took a little bit. Um, precautions. Um, we started training at my home, my home in the garage, and training a little bit outside of the gym. Um, so we changed it up just a little bit. Okay. So, what are your thoughts uh, when Anna White said that John Jones is going to be next for the the next challenger for the title? Oh, I don't care. You know, that's good. Um, Jones been really cleaning out the division in 205. And, you know, I'm pretty sure he wants some type of competition. No, so it doesn't matter. Um, you know, I get through Curtis this weekend and, 
you know, I don't expect for a title shot, nothing like that. Even at the end of the year, you know, maybe Izzy might come up. You know, he probably will be fighting for the title before I do. Um, Mighty Mouse might even come back in the tournament to um, fight for the heavyweight title. You never know. Hey, whatever sells. You know, we, it's cool with me. For sure, for sure. Hey, if the champion uh, may, I don't know who's going to win, Stipe or Ngannou, may, is going to be out for a long time. Maybe you, if you get the W, you will fight Jones to be the number one contender. Uh, I don't care who I fight next. It doesn't matter because I just I fought just by everyone, except for Stipe and Overeem. I would I would like to fight Overeem next, but it wouldn't. I don't know if Overeem was even still going to be around after that last performance. So I don't even know. So we'll see. I don't I don't care who I fight next. Okay, and what's your prediction for the fight? Um, I believe that I could get him out of there in the first round. Like, okay. the long I'm sitting in his chair, being in his hot-ass room with, with the, the media crew, I'm feeling I'm ready to get up out of Nevada already. So, yeah. Okay. The last time you sent greetings to Ecuador and everybody was uh, talking about the, the interview I had with you, would you like to send another message to your Ecuadorian fans because they were very happy and rooting for you? I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, probably mucho gracias, putos. <laughs> oh, not putos. Um, mucho gracias, puto todo. Oh, sí, sí. Yes. Simón, yes. <laughs> Thank you very much for your time, Harry. Good Simón. <laughs> yes, yes. Us. We'll go next to Hunter Brownstein with MMA Weekly. Your line is open. Hey, Derek, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I um I spoke with Curtis earlier, and he attributed you saying uh, that you could you know take him down and uh, do punishment to him on the ground as you know he attributed that towards your sense of humor. Uh, what's your response to that? Are, do you really welcome you know uh, a match on the ground with him? Yes, yes, one hundred percent. And I really do believe I could have more takedowns than him in this fight. I really do believe that. Yes. Uh. You know, I know uh, a big talking point that you had after um, your victory over Olenek was, you know, taking the sport more, more seriously and putting more work into it. Uh, what, what's your response to Blade saying, you know, you don't put the, the work in, you know, you don't put in the work uh, for what it takes to be great? Well, that's fine. Shit, I mean, how many fights I got and how many fights he got? And what's going on with me and what's going on with him? Shit. My resume speaks for itself, so he can say all that, what he want, no, that's fine. You know, whatever whatever takes for him to show up fight night, that's fine. So I don't care. I know uh, when you um, when you fought Ilir Latifi, you uh, predicted that you would win by controversial decision, and that's actually what wound up happening. It came to fruition. Mm -hmm. Do you have any uh, predictions for this fight? Um, I believe that it's going to be a first-round knockout. I'll knock him out in the first round. Great. First Thank you exchange. so much. First exchange, I'll knock him out. For sure. Yeah. Appreciate you, Black Bees. Good luck on Saturday. Yeah, thank you. We'll go next to Nikita with Sport Express. Your line is open. Derek, big honor to talk to you. Hello. Uh, I thought it was going to be a woman. You said Nikita. <laughs> I thought it, I'm thinking about the TV show, Nikita. In Russia, it's very well spread name, so we are. Uh, got this. Derek, okay. Derek, I have all this interested uh, when Bruce Buffer announces uh, you uh, prior to belt. Do you feel dry fire? Fire? Did do he? Does he give it to you or for you just formality? You know. Say that again. When Bruce Buffer announces you. Uh, have you ever felt fire drive or for you it's just more formality and you're completely in your own thoughts and you don't pay attention to him um whenever bruce buffer announces me and all that yeah i still i still um get chills and goosebumps it's like it's crazy feeling you know i, I say this all the time it's like i don't even supposed to be here and just it's been a cool ride cool journey and hopefully i could continue that Derek, I always uh, thought that you have very un underrated kicks. I think they're very athletic, very light and fast. You have good uh, uh, power, but have you ever visualized 
high kick knockouts. And uh, maybe now you have some, you know, combinations in training and you can force high kick knockout in the fight. Yes, actually, I got two knockouts by head kicks in the gym. So hopefully I can really transfer that over. Um, maybe, maybe Saturday if I decide on doing it. But I really want to work on my All-American wrestling that I've been doing, working on. So, yeah, we'll see. Derek, you have one of the most legendary uh, celebration, win celebration after the fight when you hit yourself to the chest and then fell down. I always was interested. What do you feel to your opponent in that moment? Just bloody satisfaction, anger, superiority. Can you describe your feelings in that moment? Um, it's all mixed emotions, you know. Um, it's what I had left in the tank. That's what I'm putting out on, onto the canvas, you know. So whatever I got left, you sometimes you might see me barely even doing it. So it's like, shit, I'm I'm tired, so I'm still gonna do it though. So there's always some. I'm just letting whatever I got left in the tank out on the um, canvas. Uh, Dick, when you go to fight, what the last thing your beautiful wife usually said to you? Just good luck, or maybe you have some special conversation prior to fight? Of course, we got pillow talk going on a couple of weeks before the fight. But yeah, I'm not going to kiss and tell. But yeah, she say good luck and some other stuff. I'm not going to tell you that. Thank you. Uh, Derek, two questions about Alexander Walker fight. Uh, can you come back with your memory in the third round? In what special moment uh, did you feel that you now gonna catch him? Or it just was uh, unpredicted reflex? Can you just uh, recollect this? Mm, Spanish, Bob? Spanish? What did you just say? Espanol? No, say <laughs> oh, say it again. Say it one more time. Uh, Derek, uh, can you remember the third round against Alexander Volkov? Uh, was any special moment when you understood that now you're gonna catch him with that overhand right, or it's just was by instinct, you know, or you just saw some openings maybe? Can you describe your feelings? Mm. That's it's too much to say in Spanish. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit. Um, okay. Um, I believe I've, I could finish him probably in the first round. And, and even if it happened like the Volkov fight, it will be, be the same way. And so it will be – I'll feel the same satisfaction. So don't ever give up on me, no matter if it's the few, last few seconds of the fight or the first few seconds of the fight. No matter if I'm getting my ass kicked. It doesn't matter. It's, I'm still in the fight. I still believe that I still have a chance. Looking to over in fight, do you think Alexander Volkov now or championship level fighter? How do you think? No, I don't think I don't think he's championship level fighter because Overeem been past his prime. I believe Overeem still doing it just to catch up with his taxes. So I don't I don't think Overeem still in it for anything else but that. So. He would have to prove himself against another, um, a real top five fighter. There, during fights, you like play possum when you pretend uh, rocked or uh, tired. Do you do your coaches like it, or maybe they say you man, that's risky. Don't play with fire. No, whenever I really do that, they kept, they be having heart attacks. They literally <laughs> have heart attacks. On, on the cage side whenever I do that because they know um, what's going on. So, you know, it is what it is. That's the way I like to do it. I feel comfortable doing it. You know, we'll just see what happens. You know, I can't – I don't like how everybody like to read me like that. Watch out. <laughs> Derek, last question from me. On a, on a scale from 1 to 10, how you rate the possibility that you will have a submission win in UFC before you retire? Um, I for sure, you know, um, you know, I never look for the submission. Whenever I want to look for a submission, I believe I, it's going to be there. Because especially when guys want to take me down, you know, um, I got some arm bars that I can get, I can throw out there. You know, so if you want me to throw a submission at this weekend, just give me a hell yeah. <laughs> Derek, thank you very much. You're a treasure. Okay, well, we love you.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we'll go next to Gabriel Gonzalez with Cakeside Press. Your line is open. Hey, Derek, how are you? I'm all right. A little hot in here. I'm good. Well, you know what? I think we all get worried when you say stuff like that, to be honest. No, no. It's really hot, though. It's for real. I want to congratulate you on becoming an all-American wrestler. I want to ask, you know, when did you decide to stop throwing those hands and take the fight to the mat? Um, when people just expect from me, that's all I have, you know, thinking that's my only game plan is that's the, all I wanted to do, just staying in vain. You know, um, I'm very well-rounded, you know, um, I'm good everywhere. You know, it all depends on if I want to choose to to do that. You touched on it a little bit about the title and where John Jones is at. You beat Curtis Blades. You're on that short list for those big fights, the Stipe's, Francis and them. Do you see you yourself? You say big fights? I've been in big fights. What do you mean? Even bigger fights. You know what I mean. Ooh. Even bigger than the ones you're getting now. Like pay-per-view main event, not just fight night. You know what I mean? Man, pay-per-view fight, they need to pay me pay-per-view money. You know, if I'm be fighting on pay-per-view, so I don't mind fighting on fight pass. Um All right. I, fight pass? No, ESPN plus. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't mind fighting on that. My quick question, man, do you see yourself staying active or do you think you might wait a little bit to see if, you know, one of those pay-per-view points comes in, one of those pay-per-view fights? No, I want to be active. Um, I don't want to just sit around, wait, and complain and be like, oh, I should have had the title shot fight next and that, this and that. No, I want to be active. And, like, whenever I get through with Curtis, it's like, who else that I could really fight next, you know, besides Overeem, you know, since he's been running at his mouth. Just to let y'all know, he the one been running at his mouth first. I wasn't the one talking crap first. I don't go around talking mess about other fighters. Because I know this is a tough sport, you know I'm not gonna just let you know, this dog a guy out just because his performance or nothing like that. But Overing is the one that been talking trash to me, and that's the one. That's the fight I would like to have next. Just out of curiosity, Alexander Volkov, since he just beat Overeem and won those two, do you have any interest running that back, or do you feel like you know what you got the finish? You don't need to revisit that fight. It doesn't matter. We can run it back. To, we all I can run it back with all these guys. It don't matter. I just want to be active. I don't want to just be sitting around. I want to ask you about one of your teams in Houston, the Rockets. I want to no, ask you. Not. No, you're not. We're going to go skip that question. I don't want to hear about the Rockets, Texans, the um, Astros. You already know the answer to that. I'm like pissed. I'm um, actually getting my tattoo removed next week. I'm getting rid of the, um, the Texan logo. I'm getting rid of all of that. And I already told my wife, do not send me out no clothes that got any of the <laughs> sport teams on it because I'm not wearing it, and I really don't want it in my house. I don't wear their beanies, their hats, their jerseys, nothing. I don't well, even you, like seeing a commercial come on my TV anymore. For the record, you're welcome to join the train. we got a lot of great Los Angeles teams over here, man, so you let me know. We'll welcome you to the club. No, nah, I don't like the Los Angeles team. I'm a LeBron fan, though, but I don't like, you know, no, nah, I don't like all that. Let me know if you ever change your mind. Um, <laughs> final, final question, man. Just uh, Stipe or Francis, who wins next month? <clears throat> um, hopefully Francis wins. It would be great if Francis wins. Why? I don't know. I, don't, I really don't care. I'm just trying to give you a politically correct answer because I really don't care who wins. So who's the first to win? I don't know why. So I don't like none of them because they're in my division. So hopefully they win. He wins. So, yeah. Always good talking to you, Derek. Thank you and good luck. <laughs> All right. Thank you. We'll take our final questions from Martina with In the Cage. Your line is open. Hello, sir. It's a pleasure to talk to you. Finally a woman. Finally hey, a woman. Uh, sir, I need to tell you that I've also watched Nikita on TV. I remember the show, so there's yes. the two of us. <laughs> um, yes, it was a cool show, yeah. Uh, I have this feeling that everything has been told, but just have two questions. Why exactly do you don't like Curtis Blaze? 
Um, because he's a, a guy that I'm going against. You know, I can't be real friendly with these guys whenever I face them. You know, I don't have nothing against. I don't even know the guy. I just finally found out how he talks um, this week, this week, because I never even heard his voice before. Okay. And so I really don't even know anything about him. So I just don't like him because that's the guy I'm facing next. That's all. Of course. Uh, and the last one, you have wins over Marcin Tebura from Poland and also Blago Ivanov. And now we will see these two together in the cage. Can you share your thought about this fight? And maybe you have some favorite in this fight. Um, Tebura and the Blago Ivanov. Ivanov? Blago fighting this, this week? <laughs> no, 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 this okay. week. Not this week, UFC uh, 260. Oh, I I didn't know they was fighting. Um, I went off. And what's the other guy? Tabor. Um, I believe um, Ivanov would take that one. Yeah, I believe Ivanov would take. It. He's a tough guy. Mm -hmm. you know, he might rock him in there, but he's never out of the fight. Still, yeah, he's tough. Okay, thank you. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Have a great fight yes. on Saturday. All right. Thank you.